All right, hi everyone. Thank you for joining the Quality Research January Hot Topics webinar. I'm going to go ahead and get started. My name is Andrea Martin, and I'm a trainer and client support analyst here at UCSD in the Office of Contracts and Grants. Um, so if this is your first time attending one of our monthly Hot Topic webinars, we try to keep them under 30 minutes, and our goal with this webinar series is to go over some of the common questions that we are receiving from UCSD's Quality Research Help Desk. So we can show you all some of the best practices and how to perform those tasks. If you have any questions as I'm going through the topics, please feel free to type your questions into the chat. And today we'll actually be discussing proposal hierarchy. Um, and we also have Maddie Osborne on with us today who is a research administrator from chemistry and biochemistry. She is a proposal hierarchy expert and she'll be chiming in and also um, share her experience using proposal hierarchy along with some helpful tips that she's learned by using it. Um, and Maddie, uh, do you wanna add anything regarding your experiences using proposal hierarchy? Yes, hi Andrea. Um, so I've used proposal hierarchy for several NIH multi-PI R01s, um, as well as a U01, with PIs both in my department and multiple outside departments. And most recently, I did an Air Force MIRI proposal that involved four UCSD PIs and a sub-award. So I've gotten to test that it actually can work, and it's really great. And I think as we move forward, and more departments start using um, quality detailed budgets for the majority of their proposals, proposal hierarchy is really going to streamline things for us because we will not have to collect Excel budgets from different PIs and departments. All of the rates are going to be consistent because they're set in KR. And also it'll be great because the budget formats will be uniform. So when the budgets are combined, it just, is going to be a lot more seamless than it is now. And then also, you know, there's going to be less room for user entry error. Um, and the contact PI fund manager who will be leading the proposal submission will no longer have to manually combine the budget into a single Excel and then transfer that, you know, onto the r, &R budget form. And I always found that that part of the budget process took so long. Um, and then once a proposal is awarded, I think it's going to be a lot more clear to see which, to see each of the PI's proposed budget versus having it saved, you know, on a server in a department or buried in a fund manager's email who left. And I've had both those things happen. So anyways, my experience has been really positive with it. It's been trial and error. Um, but I plan to continue to use it and I'm hopeful that, you know, more people will going forward. Perfect. Thank you so much, Maddie. And Maddie will be keeping an eye on the chat. So if you do have any questions as I'm going through, um, again, feel free to type your questions in and she can kind of stop me and chime in and um, answer any questions that you may have. Um, but now let's kind of just go over proposal hierarchy. So if you aren't familiar with it, um, it's a very useful functionality like Maddie just said, um, but you may not find yourself using it every day. But in those trickier situations where you are collaborating with other departments, uh, it can be very helpful. So basically it allows you Oops, sorry. Um, that can be routed and submitted as a single proposal in quality research and to the sponsor. This gives users better control over different aspects of the budget um, and just allows more people to have more control, like Maddie said, over their separate sections. Um, and so, like, also, like what Maddie was saying, this could be very useful for situations where maybe you have fringe or indirect costs that could vary based on the participating departments. 
Perfect. So now I'm going to jump into a proposal. Let me just refresh this real quick. Um, so here in the proposal, we see up at the top of the screen, we have our hierarchy button up at the top of this toolbar. Um, so specifically from here, you can initiate a hierarchy, which will create a parent, making your current proposal a child proposal. Um, so we'll go over that in a second. You are also able to search from the child proposal and link to a parent. You can search from a parent proposal and link child proposals. You can synchronize all child data from the parent and vice versa. Um, and you can also unlink, you can unlink proposals too. Um, so if we wanted to initiate a hierarchy and create a parent proposal, um, so from this window, um, we're going to, we are, since we're not linking, we're going to leave this first field blank, but I will go into the second field where it says hierarchy budget type. We will need to select one. I'm going to select this sub budget option. You probably won't ever really be using the sub project option. Um, what that does is just kind of take the summary budget of each child proposal and puts it into the parent's budget, but it wouldn't allow you to see all of those important details of the recorded expenses, like the sub budget option allows us to see. So I'll go ahead and select the sub budget option. And then from here, um, I'm just going to click on this create hierarchy button. So I'll go ahead and click on that. Perfect, so what happened when we clicked hierarchy? Um, so this made our original proposal the child proposal and it copied all of our proposals information and linked that information to the initiated parent proposal. So if we look over at the hierarchy button now, you'll see a C next to it, that stands for child. And you'll see in a second, when we go into the parent, there'll be a P next to hierarchy for parent. So that's just kind of an easy way to kind of reference and keep track whether you're in your child or your parent proposal. And then we also have this notification up at the top of the screen. It's just letting us know that our parent proposal has been created along with the parent proposal's number. And since we don't have a finalized budget, it's also just letting us know that the latest one will be in the parent, but we can finalize the budget here in the child, and then we would sync the proposal from the child or the parent. So the parent has the finalized budget version. So we'll go over that in a bit as well. Um, so now to get to our parent proposal, there's um, a couple different ways we can do this. We can either search for that number that was provided to us, this one right here, um, or we could also just navigate to our summary slash submit section um, and go into the hierarchy tab, which I think is the faster option. It's also nice because we're going to get a visual representation of our linked proposals. So I'm going to scroll down and on the left hand menu, um, kind of towards the bottom, I'm going to click on the summary slash submit section. And then from here, I'm just going to go into the second to last hierarchy tab. And now we have this great visual representation presentation of um, our linked proposals. So just to kind of go over where we are, um, currently we are in this child proposal. And then when we initiated a hierarchy, this parent proposal was created. So now to jump in there, I'm just going to click on that view document underneath the parent proposal number. Perfect, so now we are in our parent proposal. Um, and we can confirm that again, uh, when we look at the hierarchy button um, in the toolbar, it now has a P next to it. Perfect, so um, now let's actually link an another child proposal to the parent. So again, I'm just going to click on hierarchy first. I'm actually going to just kind of take note of my parent proposal. 
um, but to link another proposal and add another child to our hierarchy, I'm going to click on hierarchy again. Um, and this time I'm going to enter the proposal I would like linked in this first field. So I'll go ahead and enter that in. Perfect. And then uh, we have to select a budget type. We are going, we need to select the same one. So I'm going to select the sub budget option. Perfect. And then I'm going to click on that blue link a child to this parent. Perfect. So we have another notification, just confirming that our child proposal was linked to the parent. And then we can confirm that again and just get that uh, visual representation um, again by going into the summary slash submit section of the proposal. And I'll go into the hierarchy tab. And now we can see we now have two child proposals underneath our parent proposal. Perfect, so now I'm going to make an update to a proposal's budget, and then we'll sync that so the parent has the most up-to-date information. Um, so I'll go ahead and click into one of my child proposals by clicking on the view document. Perfect, and I'm just going to um, add an expense to the budget, so I'm going to click into our budget section of the proposal. And I'm going to click on that blue linked budget name so we can get in there and click on open budget. Perfect. And I'm just going to add a non personnel expense. So I'll go into the non personnel cost section. You can see I already have an expense in here. So um, to add an expense, I'm just going to go to the right side of the screen and click on assign non personnel. And I'm just going to add a travel expense. And then um, something that I actually learned from Maddie uh, that I think is a really helpful tip um, is noting the PI's last name in the cost description. That way, when those expenses are synced to the parent, it's easy to see which expenses are coming from which department or PI. Um, so in this example, I'm just going to note the PI's last name, and then I'll click on that blue add non-personnel item to one. Perfect, so our expense has been added. I'll go ahead and click on save. And now I want to sync my budget. Um, so I'm going to click on hierarchy and then you'll see we have the option to sync budget. I don't think it's going to let me. I think that my um, parent proposal has been locked since I was just in there. But let's just see. If not, I'll go ahead and show you all how to delete a lock on something. Yeah, so it looks like my parent proposal is locked. So I'm going to open my common task in a different tab. In my common task screen, um, I'm just going to find this first quick links card and click on locks. From here, you don't necessarily need to enter any information um, in these fields, but if you do have the exact proposal number that you have locked that you want to delete, you can enter that in the lock descriptor field. And I'll go ahead and click on delete so I can remove my lock. Okay, I'm gonna hop back in to my budget. And let me just refresh this. Okay. I'll go ahead and click on hierarchy again. And now I'm going to click on sync budget. Perfect, so we got that blue notification, just kind of confirming that the synchronization was successful. So now I'm going to go back um, into the proposal 
and I'm going to go into the summary slash submit section. I want to get back into my parent proposal and we can look at the parent proposals budget together so we can see that synced cost. So I'll go into hierarchy and click on view document so we can get into the parent. Perfect. And I'll go into the parent's budget and I'll click into the hierarchy budget. And I'll go into our non-personnel cost. Perfect, so we see um, some other expenses from the other child proposal um, is in here. And then we can see the expenses from the other budget that we are just in. Um, so this is a, a really great because um, you kind of see where which expenses are coming from which PI. So if that is something that's important to you, um, I definitely recommend utilizing Maddie's tip and just noting the PI's last name in the description. That way you can just kind of keep track of what is coming from where. Perfect. Um, so I just want to go over some things to keep in mind. Um, so before you create a parent proposal, all of the child proposals must have the same project dates, otherwise they will not sync. And in order to create a proposal hierarchy or to link child proposals to an existing hierarchy, um, the users must have the aggregator role on the parent proposal. Um, so just to kind of quickly review, um, you can provide people that role that you're collaborating with from this um, access section. Um, and then the PI of the child proposal that created the parent is automatically the lead PI of the parent proposal in the hierarchy. So this also means that the lead unit or department of the child proposal that created the parent will be the lead unit of the parent proposal. So with that said, before you create the parent proposal, you should decide which child proposal you will use to create it um, based on who the lead PI and unit will be. And then here's just kind of a simple breakdown of what would go where. So the parent proposal is where you would notify the PIs to answer research questions and certify. You would also answer the questionnaires in the parent proposal. And since most often child proposals are used for budgets and proposal personnel information, you could upload attachments in the child proposals and sync them to the parent. Um, but according to Quali, they say it is best practice to upload the attachments in the parent proposal. Um, so that is what I recommend. Um, I don't know, Maddie, if you prefer one way or the other. Yeah, I think definitely uploading the attachments in the parent is what I've always done. The only exception to that is um, you can upload the PI's bio sketch in the child. So that might be helpful because the fund manager and another department can make sure that the most updated bio sketches in their child and then you'll sync that and that attachment will go into the parent. But besides that, all attachments should be in the parent. And you can also do um, the space questionnaire for each individual PI in their child, um, but all the other questionnaires will be done in the parent. Oh, perfect, good tips, thank you, Maddie. Um, and then for the child proposal, um, so like what we just did earlier, the budget should be entered in the child proposal and any changes to the budget are made in child proposals. Um, and then like what we did, those changes are then synced up to the parent proposal. No, so changes to the budget cannot be made directly in the parent proposal. Um, again, so any changes to the budget all need to be done um, at the child level. And then pretty similar, um, changes to personnel details are made in the child proposals. And then those changes are then, just like the budget, synced up to the parent proposal. Um, so changes to the personnel details cannot be made directly in the parent at all. Um, so 
if an investigator has been synced up to the parent proposal, you cannot delete them at the parent level. Um, you need to delete them from the child and then sync that. And um, do you want to just add yeah. one thing to that? Thank so you. you can't delete them from the parent, but what I found is when I synced my proposals together, sometimes little details from the child personnel section didn't um, translate over to the parent. So mm -hmm. for instance, for an NIH proposal where we had an ERA Commons ID for one of the investigators, when I synced the proposal, that didn't transfer to the parent. So I ended up just going into the parent and overriding it there. But Andrea is right. You only add the actual personnel via the children, but you can update details in the personnel section on the parent. Oh, perfect. Perfect, that's great to know. Thank you, Maddie. Um, yeah, and then do you wanna add anything else, Maddie? Um, anything that I might have missed or any helpful tips? No, I think you covered it. Um, Perfect. And I, I wrote down a bunch of useful tips and I think Andrea is gonna be sending those out after. So, and if anyone has questions, feel free to contact me because even if I don't know the answer, like I'm happy to troubleshoot it with you. Perfect. Yeah, Maddie has been kind enough to kind of write out step by step um, exactly like her process for how she likes to create her um, proposal hierarchy. So I've recorded this presentation. So this will be sent out um, and I will also be sending out Maddie's step-by-step um, -step guide. Um, perfect. So if there are no other questions, um, thank you everyone for hopping on today.